Number 9. Oscar Mayorga An officer of the Apopka Police Department in Florida was found drinking behind the wheel on July the 4th of 2022 while he was on duty. 25-year-old Oscar Mayorga's colleagues caught up with him after a resident had reported spotting his cruiser running stop signs and swerving erratically. The officers asked the uniformed Mayorga to roll down his window and immediately detected a strong odor of alcohol emanating from him. Body cam footage showed the bleary-eyed man as he was being questioned by fellow law enforcement officers. He claimed that he was on his way to work and admitted that he'd been drinking, with police discovering that he was roughly five times over the legal limit. Mayorga explained that his thought process had been centered on leaving a gap of several hours between having the drinks and starting his shift, believing he'd sober up. The officers, however, also spotted an open beer can in the center cup holder of his cruiser. Mayorga was eventually put on a stretcher and taken away in an ambulance for medical treatment. In the aftermath, he was charged with a DUI and suspended without pay. Number 8. Jessica Mary O'Brien On July the 13th of 2018, an unnamed man from Brisbane, Australia, had his clothes set on fire by his enraged girlfriend following a bender involving prescription pills and alcohol. Jessica May O'Brien, then in her late 20s, was at a Kangaroo Point apartment complex with her then-partner, reported as being 17 years her senior. The couple, whose relationship was described as often volatile, shared several bottles of wine and O'Brien also took Prozac tablets. An argument eventually erupted after the woman had phoned a male friend. As tensions escalated, O'Brien threw her boyfriend's wallet from the balcony, to which he retaliated by launching her phone over. After the man had left the apartment to calm down, O'Brien set fire to some of his clothes before leaving the unit. The barefooted woman encountered two strangers on her way out of the complex and told them to call the fire brigade. They'd later report that she was slurring her words and seemed off her face, in reference to her advanced state of intoxication. She also allegedly offered one of them $10,000 if they'd help her flee. O'Brien went to her ex-husband's Ashgrove house and found that the man wasn't home. She broke in and slept in his bed before the police eventually tracked her down and took her into custody. The New Zealand-born woman who had a history of mental health issues ultimately avoided jail time for her drunken rampage and was given a 12-month intensive correction order. Number 7. Gary Anderson In May of 2019, Florida man Gary Anderson drove an electric-powered lawnmower which had a trailer attached to it on a highway leading up to Haines City. At some point, the heavily intoxicated 68-year-old lost control of the lawn trimmer and crashed into a police cruiser which had no occupants, inflicting minor damage to its bumper. Anderson had twice been convicted of DUI in the past and his driver's license had been suspended since 1978. When he was eventually confronted by law enforcement, Anderson's attitude reportedly ranged from laughing to aggressive and he collapsed to the ground multiple times. His bender had been fueled by a cooler with drinks, which was found in his trailer. And he eventually admitted being intoxicated, telling an officer, I'm drunk, take me to jail. After failing to take field sobriety tests, Anderson was transported to Heart of Florida Regional Medical Center where his blood alcohol was found to be three times the legal limit. Cocaine was also discovered in his system, but the man accused one of the arresting officers of having poisoned him with it while using profanities and racial slurs. Number 6. Bayan Mutlu In the fall of 2021, Turkish man Bayan Mutlu went on a bender with several of his friends in the northwestern province of Bursa. After downing a few drinks, the 50-year-old Inagol resident wandered into nearby woods. A few hours had passed with the man's wife unable to find or contact him, and she became concerned. As he roamed the forest trying to find his way back, Mutlu came upon a group of rescuers who'd been looking for a missing person. The inebriated man decided to join the search party, unaware that he was in fact the person they'd been tasked with finding. He'd inadvertently begun searching for himself and the group only realized it when someone shouted out his name. Mutlu replied, I'm here, from within the search party, and the error became clear. 
One of the rescue workers took his statement before giving him a lift home, but it wasn't clear if he was reprimanded for his actions. Number 5. Incident in Bangkok In November of 2016, a commuter in Bangkok, Thailand captured a couple in the midst of a street confrontation which subsequently went viral. Neither of those involved was named, but witnesses reported that the argument had been centered on the man having gone on a bender. In the morning, as he was nursing his hangover with some street food, he was confronted by his wife who was wheeled in a machete. The woman ordered him in the car after she'd berated him for going out and partying all night long. She pointed the blade at her spouse and also struck him in the midsection with the flat side as he struggled to come to grips with the situation. The broad daylight incident, which was subsequently covered by international press outlets, concluded with the man getting into the car's front passenger seat. Number 4. Stephen Thomas Caressel and Richard Brenton Melby Two college lacrosse players from Orange County, California were arrested on suspicion of theft in April of 2016 after kidnapping a turkey and taking it on a bender. Stephen Thomas Caressel and Richard Brenton Melby, both in their early 20s, had taken the five-year-old turkey named Tim from the agricultural area of the Orange High School where students were taught how to take care of animals. Tim, an American heritage slate turkey, was considered a threatened species and students raised the alarm when they realized he was missing. When the animal was found, it had trouble breathing, reeked of beer, was covered in a sticky black substance and missing most of his chest and tail feathers. During the kidnapping, Tim reportedly suffered a punctured esophagus, which left him unable to properly digest his food. He struggled for months, but was eventually put down. Days after his death, Caressel and Melby pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor count of entering an animal enclosure without consent. As indicated by court records, they were ordered to serve one day in jail, 100 hours of community service and paid $223 in restitution to the Saddleback Animal Hospital, where Tim had been treated. Number 3. Joachim Robin Berggren Swedish man Joachim Robin Berggren caused a citywide panic in Barcelona after going on a bender and stealing a truck carrying gas cylinders in February of 2017. Berggren had flown into the country from Russia a day before the incident and checked into a hotel with the intention of leaving for Madrid on the same day. Local media reported that at the last minute, Berggren changed his mind and decided to take advantage of the Catalan city's vibrant nightlife. He went on a bender that bank statements indicated had cost him over $20,000 and allegedly involved escorts, alcohol and illegal substances. The man then went on a drunken rampage through the city the following morning. He tried stopping several vehicles and stealing a motorbike before he ultimately got behind the wheel of a truck laden with gas canisters. The driver had left the keys in the ignition and 32-year-old Berggren started driving the truck on the wrong side of the road, leading local authorities on a two-mile chase. Witnesses reported that the man was laughing like a maniac. During the pursuit and concerns arose that the city was facing an extremist attack. Officers fired seven shots at the truck, bringing it to a halt, and then took Berggren into custody. They eventually learned that the man hadn't been carrying out a planned attack and admitted him to a psychiatric care center. In October of 2017, he was given a fine of over $1,000, along with a two-year suspended sentence and allowed to return home. Number 2. Earl Lee Johnson in April of 2022, an unnamed social media user stumbled upon a gruesome video on Facebook Live that showed a woman being bound and stabbed. The user reported the video to Facebook and the company alerted the authorities. The victim was identified as 34-year-old Janice David and her naked body was found in a partially torched BMW 5 Series by law enforcement in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. As later reported by investigators, she and local man Earl Lee Johnson had reportedly been on a drug bender for several days. At some point, 35-year-old Johnson became enraged and accused David of stealing his belongings and trying to flee from him. He tied her to the BMW steering wheel and then live-streamed the torment to which he subjected her. In one portion of the footage, the shirtless man ranted into the camera about the alleged theft and then knifed David in the leg as she panted heavily while begging him to stop. The 15-minute video was brought to a horrific conclusion as Johnson fatally stabbed her in the neck. By the time that the killing and the woman's body were discovered, the police already had Johnson in custody on charges of theft of a motor vehicle and aggravated flight from an officer. 
He confessed to the kid and faced any time from 30 years to life imprisonment. Number 1. Bennett Von Vertis In late December of 2014, British man Alex Morgan, aged 23, flew to Switzerland to spend New Year's on a skiing holiday with his family. Before arriving at his destination, he accepted an invitation to a villa in the exclusive enclave of Kuschnacht, owned by the family of Bennett Von Vertis. Then, in his late twenties, Morgan had met the man who was the son of a millionaire art dealer at Regent's College in London. Vertes's aristocratic parents ran an art gallery in Zurich and hailed from Hungarian-German nobility. They had a respectable reputation, but their son had well-documented problems with substance abuse. In the past, he'd been accused but ultimately cleared of beating and assaulting one of his girlfriends. During his time with Morgan on December the 30th, Vertes took a cocktail of illegal substances and prescription pills that reportedly sent him into a psychotic state with paranoid delusions. He would later tell the authorities that he saw his friend as a green alien who was trying to kill him. Vertes, who practiced kickboxing and at 6 foot 5 inches towered over Morgan, brutally attacked him. He slammed the man into a glass coffee table which shattered. Morgan was slashed with glass shards and struck with a golden sculpture and a three-foot-long candlestick. Vertes killed him by shoving the candlestick down his throat, inflicting such horrific injuries that a closed casket was required for his funeral. A legal battle, lasting several years, was then sustained by Morgan's barrister mother, Katia Faber, who sought justice for her son against what she perceived as a tendency for legal leniency towards Vertes. Initially convicted of intentional killing and sentenced to 12 and a half years, his punishment was reduced to three years on appeal after his legal team argued that he hadn't been responsible for his actions due to the effects of drugs. He was released for time served on the condition that he entered a drug rehabilitation unit. Faber was infuriated upon looking up the clinic and seeing that it looked like a spa set in an idyllic location and with a number of amenities for its patients. Her ire was further kindled by the Vertes family's offer to pay her emotional compensation for Morgan's death on her insistence. The prosecution launched a counter-appeal and in the spring of 2022, Vertes's original sentence was upheld. Thanks for watching. Would you rather black out every time you drink alcohol or get an intense stomachache whenever you have fast food? Let us know in the comments section below.